Hello again everyone, and today I'm happy to be presenting you with Sam Yang's latest new full-frame autofocus lens for Sony mirrorless cameras, the AF 35mm f1.8 FE. It's part of their series of very small lenses, as you can probably see here, and when it's out, it'll cost about 400 US dollars or about 350 pounds here in the UK. So that rather undercuts Sony's equivalent 35mm f1.8 lens, which costs over 700 US dollars. I'd like to thank Samyang's UK distributor for loaning me a copy of this lens for a week or so for testing, although as usual, this is a totally independent review. We'll be looking out for all of its strengths and weaknesses. 35mm on a full frame camera is one of my favourite focal lengths of all. It's a lovely wide angle for capturing your whole scene, but it also gives you just a little bit of emphasis on your subject too. And with an aperture as bright as f1.8, you can shoot quite easily indoors or in darker situations, and you can get some nicely out of focus backgrounds too. On APS-C cameras, it's the full frame equivalent of a 52mm lens, bringing you closer to your subject again, so you can safely say it's an extremely useful piece of kit to have, and this one's small size and lightweight of only 210 grams makes it nice and portable too. After all, the best lens to have is the one you have with you. Samyang also claim that it's fairly well weather sealed around its control points too, and there is indeed a thin weather sealing gasket around the rear lens mount. The lens feels like it's made of lightweight metal, so it doesn't exactly feel tough, but it should survive a few knocks here and there, I think. At the front, it has a control ring, which is made of plastic and turns reasonably smoothly. If you set it to custom mode 2, then it'll control your camera's aperture, although it doesn't change aperture smoothly for video makers. Set it to custom mode 1, and it'll change focus for you, and you can make various adjustments to how it works too, if you plug it into one of Samyang's USB lens docks. As you change focus, the image zooms in quite noticeably, as you can see here. The lens's autofocus motor is almost silent, and it works accurately and averagely quickly, although I did sometimes notice it being a bit uncertain of itself and focus hunting just occasionally. The lens has a 58mm filter thread, and it comes with a plastic hood and a little carry case. Overall, its build quality and functionality are fine, it's very well behaved. It doesn't feel like a premium quality product, but it works perfectly well, and it's comforting to know there's some weather sealing in there too. Well, let's move on to image quality, and I'll start by testing it on a full frame camera, my 42 megapixel Sony A7R II. Straight away from f1.8, we see excellent resolution in the middle. Contrast is fairly good too, but we see just a little edge of colour fringing here on highly contrasting edges. Well, let's take a look in the corners, they're impressively sharp too, loads of detail is being captured there, and on a 42 megapixel full frame camera, that's no mean feat. Again though, we do see a little colour fringing. Well, let's top down the aperture just a tiny bit to f2, the corner image quality looks about the same, but back in the middle, we see that topping down just a little has increased the contrast and decreased that colour fringing. So, if you're looking for really excellent image quality, all you have to do is top down to f2. Stop down to f2.8 for absolutely perfect resolution and contrast in the middle, with no trace of colour fringing left now. Contrast levels in the corners receive just a little boost too, looking a little brighter and clearer. The corners stay this sharp down to f11, and even f16 doesn't look too bad, despite a bit of softening from the effects of diffraction. So, overall, on full frame, it's a great performance from this little lens, tons of sharpness and very good contrast, although as I mentioned before, a little colour fringing on contrasting edges is noticeable. Now let's mount the lens onto an APS-C camera, my little Sony A5100 with its 24 megapixel sensor. Straight from f1.8, the good news is that resolution and contrast are holding out very well, even on a slightly more difficult sensor, although that purple fringing is a little more visible. And over in the corners, the image is a little softer, but still not too bad. Let's top down again just a tiny bit to f2. The corner image quality looks just a tiny bit brighter here, 
and back in the middle, a lot of that colour fringing has already gone. Stop down to f2.8 for a spectacularly sharp and punchy image quality in the middle, and the corners are markedly improved too. f4 sees just a touch more resolution again, and the lens stays this sharp down to f8. If you stop down to f11 or darker, then your image will slowly start to get a bit softer due to the effects of diffraction. So, it's also a good performance on an APS-C camera, although you'll want to stop down just a little to reduce that colour fringing, and stop down a little bit more to make your corners really sharp. Now let's move on and look at distortion and vignetting on a full frame camera. These pictures are all taken with in-camera corrections turned off. The good news is that the lens projects very little distortion at all, which is not to be taken for granted on a wide angle optic. The bad news is vignetting. Unsurprisingly, this lens's small size, wide angle and bright aperture combine to leave us with fairly dark corners at f1.8. Stop down to f2.8 for an improvement, f4 and f5.6 look progressively better, although even at f8 an edge of vignetting is still there in the edges, so you'll definitely want to keep in-camera corrections turned on for vignetting at least. Let's take a look at close-up image quality now. The lens can focus down to 29cm, which is quite good for getting photos of smaller subjects. Unfortunately, at f1.8, that close-up image quality is very soft, with a large amount of colour fringing. This lens is clearly optimised for working at normal shooting distances, which is perhaps a side effect of its smaller design. f2.8 looks a lot better though, and stop down to f4 for excellent image quality at close distances. Now let's see how the lens works against bright lights. Reasonably well, it seems, there's a small amount of green flaring when a bright light is directly in the picture, and just a little ghosting at certain angles too, but for a bright aperture, wide angle lens that's really not too bad. While we're working in the dark now, let's take a look at coma levels too. At f1.8, bright points of light in the corners of your images suffer from a moderate amount of coma smearing. I've seen better here, but I've seen worse too. Stop down to f2.8 to see it pretty much all gone though, and if you stop down to f5.6, then you begin to see some gentle sun stars emerging. Let's zoom out a little, and there's a bigger one. Nothing dramatic though. Moving on, let's take a look at the quality of this lens's bokeh. An important quality for an optic as bright as f1.8, the lens is quite happy to give you noticeably out of focus backgrounds when you move a little closer to your subject, and those out of focus backgrounds generally look quite nice, perhaps a little smudgy here and there, but there's nothing distracting going on anyway. And finally, let's take a look at longitudinal chromatic aberration. We'll start at f1.8. During my time at Theological College, we weren't encouraged to study ancient Greek while simultaneously dropping acid, but now I know what that must feel like, just look at the text. Stop down to f2.8 for an improvement, but that colour fringing is still pretty notable. It's still there at f4, but at f5.6 it's mostly gone. Well, overall, longitudinal chromatic aberration and other colour fringing issues might seem to be a bit of a problem for this lens as well as some vignetting, but don't let that worry you too much, because just about everything else about the lens's image quality is excellent. It's a really sharp optic with good contrast, neutral colours, almost no distortion, low flaring and good quality bokeh, and all those things are the core qualities you expect to see in optics that are more expensive than this one. In fact, this Samyang lens seems to perform slightly better than Sony's own recent equivalent and much more expensive lens. In fact, I might be making a special video in the next few days to look at some of the differences. This might not be the best lens in the world for video makers, its autofocus is slightly uncertain and it does suffer from a little focus breathing, although apart from that it'll perform just fine. Otherwise, this little new lens from Samyang could prove incredibly useful to just about anyone, and it's certainly great value for money, and so, especially considering its low price, it has to come highly recommended.